Hi, I'm Tim Kilbride, physical therapist and spinal cord injury specialist here at Gaylord Specialty Healthcare. And today we're going to be discussing spinal cord injuries and anatomy. The spinal cord is a column of neurological tissue that connects the brain to the body. When it's damaged, it can cause a lot of different symptoms, including changes in sensation, movement or strength, your bowel and bladder control, or your sexual function. The spinal cord exists in the spinal canal, which is a long tube that's in the spine. It's protected by the bony structures of the vertebrae. Between each vertebrae, there is a disc which acts as both a shock absorber and uh, adds some range of motion to how the spine moves. At each vertebral level, there's a nerve root that's connected to your spinal cord and brings a signal to or from a specific part of your body. The very top of your spinal cord in your neck is referred to as your cervical spine. And your cervical spine is connected to the arms, both sensation and movement. The middle back area of your spine is called your thoracic spine, and the nerves there innervate your chest and belly area, as well as your back. Your lower back is referred to as your lumbar spine. The nerves that enter and exit the spinal cord there connect to your legs, and your sacral spine, or your tailbone, has nerves that control things like sexual functioning and bowel and bladder control. A spinal cord injury can generally fall into two categories. There's traumatic or non-traumatic. Traumatic spinal cord injuries usually result from damage to the spine, which causes uh, pressure or damage to the nerves. Non-traumatic are generally from a disease process of some sort, like transverse myelitis. When looking at a spinal cord injury or disorder, um, we start to try to determine which parts of the body are functioning and which parts need to be adapted around. That generally depends on where in your spinal cord you're injured. When a person has an injury in their neck, it is common that they'll have weakness or numbness uh, in the arms and the legs, commonly referred to as tetraplegia or quadriplegia. When a person has a spinal cord injury in their mid back or below, generally only the legs will be involved and this is referred to as paraplegia. Spinal cord injuries can either be considered incomplete or complete. If you have an incomplete spinal cord injury, it means that you have some messages that are making it from the brain to the body or from the body to the brain past the injury. This generally means you can have some sensation, some movement, or some of both below your level of injury. If you have a complete spinal cord injury, this means that you have no movement or sensation below your level of injury. Whether you have a complete or incomplete spinal cord injury is determined with the completion of a neurological exam, referred to as an ASIA exam. An ASIA exam assesses both your strength and your sensation to determine the nature of your spinal cord injury. The ASIA exam will classify an injury as either an ASIA A, B, C, D, or E. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this educational.